Okay, so we have a, a change in the program. Which talk will be tomorrow? Yep. Yep. So it's my turn now. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about what I have been working with in Brazil uh, since I I don't know didn't know many of you before, and you had a lot of questions of how things are going in Brazil. Have to decided to change my talk was initially about Isaac. Uh, but I decided to change it and tell what we do regarding teacher training, outreach, things related to global health and So this will, that will be the focus of my talk. Uh, as you may know, uh, we do a lot of video stuff, so I'm going to show you some of the videos we are producing. Uh, so I, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, so here's a quick outline, uh, just a brief uh, story about uh, Galileo teacher training program in Global Hampton University, Brazil. I'll talk a little about how our school and curriculum is organized, how, where astronomy goes in our, in our schools, uh, what kind of teacher training initiatives are, are going on, uh, the outreach activities I've been developing at San Carlos, where I live, and uh, a little about uh, our Isaac campaigns. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I work in a university in Brazil, in São Carlos, which is a town two and a half hours from São Paulo. It's in the São Paulo state. It's a medium-sized town. It has 200,000 inhabitants. And we have two good universities there. My university has around 10,000 students, and we have other two campuses in nearby towns. So it's a good place to work. Uh, so I, I got in, in Hanzo Universe uh, two years ago when we had uh, the meeting at Porto Alegre in, in the south of Brazil. Uh, Maria de Fatima, who's here, was the one who organized it. We had a few people who are here there, Carl, Rosa, Patrick, Frank was, was there too, uh, Michelle, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so there's Fatima, there's myself, and there's Marcelo, Marcelo Souza, who lives in Rio de Janeiro State, uh, who are working with uh, Galileo and Glenn Hanson University. A funny thing is that it was in July, the dead of winter in Brazil, and the people who came there were not prepared at all for the cold weather, especially Susan. If, if she's cold here, you can imagine how cold she was there, which was <laughs> around zero degrees Celsius. <laughs> uh, so she, here she is with uh, layers and layers of clothing. Uh, but it was a, a, good, a good meeting. Uh, we had a GTTP session before. Uh, with, I don't know, 20, 30 teachers, maybe. Was. Yeah, more. So it was a good opportunity. For me, it was my first contact with your work, and that's when I began collaborating in a more active sense. Uh, so, uh, Maria de Fatima, which is one of the GTP rep representatives, uh, she has organized a few workshops. I think the first one was the one two, two years ago, right, Rosa? Yes, yes, the first one. Yeah, and after she organized another one, and also we had made a few workshops at São Carlos, and also one at Campus dos Botacazes, is where Marcelo Souza lives. Uh, I'll talk about uh, in a few minutes, moments about. This workshop. And there was one in Rio de Janeiro in 2000. Oh, yeah, exactly. With Marcelo yeah. Lima and John Canale. Exactly, during the IAU meeting. Exactly, so it's five. So we have, we have a lot of demand uh, regarding teacher training, but I, I'll talk about it, in, about it in a few moments. But we have a lot of activities going on, dealing uh, with our volunteers, uh, discussing Earth Moon System. Spectroscopes, uh, you know, the usual stuff, and the, the teachers love it. So we have both traditional astronomy hands-on, you know, with paper, uh, 
company and also new technology activities. So far we have uh, we should over 100 teachers in these workshops. Uh, our school curriculum is very similar to the state. We have three levels of education. Uh, one is the elementary one, as we call it, which is up to kids 10 years old. We have the elementary two, which is from fifth to ninth grade here, and then high school. And we have both private and uh, public systems, uh, but most people study at, at public schools, which are free. Uh, and at the, the public sphere, the, the towns, the municipalities, they're responsible for the, the first level of the education. So if your kid, at the beginning, in the public school, we study in uh, the municipal school. And the other levels are uh, supported by, by the state governments. So there's a separation. Uh, and at higher education, uh, after high school, uh, we also have public and uh, private universities and colleges. Uh, and the public universities are also public. And, but the larger number are of private colleges and universities. We have many public universities, both federal and statewide, but uh, the great majority of, uh, of schools are in the private system. And the, the public are better. But what happens then is that the kids who study in the private schools in their initial education, which are better than the, the public system at college. And the kids who, who go to the public school, they, they can get in the public uh, colleges because they have a selection, so it's harder to get in. So they have to pay for their higher education. So it's a little, little strange. That's what happens. And we also have a kind of technical education, which is a shorter higher education, uh, two to three years. So people who want to get in the market, the work market uh, faster, they usually do this technical education. You also have a great number of students who do online degrees, uh, because Brazil is such a large country. Uh, the government has been investing heavily in online teaching, so they don't have to build an university in, you know, in every town or every region of the country. So this is how our uh, school is system is structured. Uh, and where is astronomy taught at, at the fundamental level? Uh, we have something that we call the PCN, which is the National Curriculum Parameter. And this should be followed by all the, the schools in the country. And it, we have to, people, the science teachers need to teach us learn between, you know, six and seven. Yeah, from, from sixth grade uh, and up. So here is a table, which is translated here, about the topics of astronomy that uh, the kids must learn in, in the school. So the young kids need to learn about, you know, movements in the sky, sunrise, sunset, uh, about the planets in the solar system, and also about ancient astronomy, you know, observatories and this kind of thing. And uh, the older kids, uh, it's required for them that they do uh, sky observations, they, that they need to do at least naked eye observations and learn also something about how far things are in the universe, uh, how that works, uh, how the sun, the moon, and the, the earth move and eclipses, moon phase, and so on, and also about the world models and how the earth was formed. So th this is what is required for science teachers to teach the students. Yeah. Uh, and also we have some content of astronomy who goes like in geography class. Sometimes seasons is the geography teacher who, who teaches, not the science teacher. 
The problem with that is that our the science teachers for elementary school are not they, they don't major in physics. The, the vast majority of them major in biology. Uh, the, if you major in physics in Brazil, you can only teach at high school. You teach physics. You can teach science at, at, at elementary school. That's called the question. What, how many hours a week does uh, science, uh, elementary school? Uh, I'd say six, around that, maybe eight. And you have have a lot of yeah. other my right. my school district. We get 15 minutes a week <laughs> of science. Oakland. Yeah. Well, that's that. Yeah, you did well. Five zero. Yeah. Anyway, um, <coughs> so we have a situation that the people who, who has to teach all of this, the last time they saw astronomy was when they were at the school themselves. Uh, so we have we have to train these teachers, these science teachers, how to teach astronomy. Even the physics majors, uh, they don't see astronomy very much, in, in, with a few exceptions. But you know, many physics departments in universities don't have astronomers working on. My university is a case of that. Uh, we have a physics department, I, I mean other department, and they don't have an astronomer. And they have only an official course on astronomy type in the last year, and very few people take it. So we are forming teachers who can teach astronomy, and they say light, you know, the phases of the moon are because of the shadow of the earth, and these kinds of misconceptions. So we, our country has really a, a demand for training these teachers and capacitate them for correctly teaching astronomy. Uh, how, how can you do that? Uh, in the public system, the teachers have uh, at least one period, you know, a morning or an afternoon, uh, free, so they can work on their skills. Uh, they have to, to, to go to their, their school district and do some kind of activity. Uh, so this is done mostly at the school district. But uh, what, what they want to do is that they take certified training sessions so they can use it, this uh, certificate, to get a uh, progression in their career. So they earn a little more in their salary. But it, it's, it's difficult to offer a certified training session because the process of certifying by the school district takes a long, long time. Uh, we tried to do that last year. It took uh, three months, more or less. If you had to write a proposal through a lot of forms sent to the uh, to this, the, this, this district, and then one month after they say, "Oh no, it's not not good." But then you don't have time to make the corrections and submit it again. So it's it's kind of difficult. This is at least in my state, in Sao Paulo state. In other states, it's easier. Might be easier, but might be more difficult there. Uh, and what happens is, if you offer a training course that don't uh, don't give a certificate to the that they can use for their progression, the teachers won't attend your your training session, or maybe they attend and then give up later. So this is very important the, the, the certification process, but it's also uh, kind of annoying because of of the bureaucracy involved in you know. You know how this. Uh, but there, there have been some uh, good in initiatives in, in Brazil lately. Uh, I'd like to highlight uh, what we call the EREA, which is uh, short for Astronomy Education Regional Meetings. Uh, this began in 2009 within the International Year of Astronomy. Uh, the International Year of Astronomy was funded very well by uh, Brazilian Ministry of Education. And they wanted that we begin yeah, offering these courses at places where you don't usually receive uh, these courses. So the main behind it 
the Stroll Kanali. He's from Rio de Janeiro. Here he is, so we met meet him. You know his face. And so far, I, in two years, I have been to 80 training sessions all around the country. So you see here are uh, the towns, and by name you, you should recognize only a few. Uh, these are small towns, you know, Sobral, Calcaia, it's in the middle of the northeast, small towns that have never had the opportunity to have such a uh, training session. And all these initiatives have huge attendance. Uh, hundreds of teachers. So it's crazy. It's an uh, in industry. Uh, Canali works only on that and on, at the Brazilian Olympiads of Astronomy. That's uh, what he does all the time. And it's amazing what he can move with his work. So that we keep going. Uh, that we, we host the the area of these meetings web page at my university. Uh, the last time I checked it was at 20, but certainly we'll have at least five more until the end of the year. So I'll show you now some pictures about uh, the meeting that we organized in São Carlos last, last October. So here's a group picture. We did this in, in partnership with the other university in São Carlos, which is the University of São Paulo, they have an observatory also, so uh, we have a good re relationship. They have excellent structure, they have an uh, auditorium, so what, uh, we, we hosted both at the University of São Paulo and at my university. Uh, so this is where also we do the Galileo scope. Um, sessions. Uh, the Brazilian government acquired, I don't know, around 10,000 Galileo scopes to, to distribute to the teachers. Uh, but they didn't want you know, just to give them to, to, the, to the schools. Because what happens with other like computers that you send this to the principal and they just store it in a, <laughs> in a, in a room. Yeah? So they wanted, yeah, if your school is going to have a Galileo scope, then you should attend the EREA, take the classes, and then you receive a Galileo scope as a reward. So this is also a motivation for these uh, teachers to, to go to, our, to the EREA. So here is Dr. Canali uh, giving the instructions. We don't do as fast as what does. Uh, we, it is usually take three hours to assemble, but he explained the optics around uh, be, behind the, the Galileo scope and so on. Uh, we had also a lot of other courses uh, going on during this session. So here was a short course on astrophotography. So this man here is a local astronomer at San Carlos who takes first world-class pictures of planets and he was teaching the teachers how to take pictures of the sky with simple cameras, webcams, and so on. Uh, we also had G-hole type like, uh, teaching, like building a scale of model of the solar system, like study plane, and then putting it together, which is, is where I work, it's pretty beautiful. So it's, it's good, it, the, the teachers like this kind of training sessions. And I was trying to have, oh, yeah. and also we have talks, plenary sessions, where, you see, so these meetings last between three and five days, and the good thing is that usually you make an agreement with the school district, so they waive all the science teachers who want to participate, participate that from, or to attend, so they, they don't miss work. So that's important. So they get a certificate, they get a Galileo scope, and it, that, that's a good thing. But the problem is, you, you see, we had 20 meetings, you, let's see 100 uh, teachers in each session, so that's amount 
2,000 uh, teachers, but we have much more. The teachers in São Paulo alone, but São Paulo city, there must be like 10,000, 10 times more teachers than that. So this has to go on forever, so we can train all teachers. Ah, this is also uh, nice. We had we have a group theater group in from Carlos, and they have uh, made a, a play of Galileo, yeah, based on Brecht. But they have like circus stuff, you know, juggling balls, uh, flamethrowers. <laughs> but they presented that play also as a part of our meeting. Uh, well, we also did some, besides that, we do some teacher training in astronomy at our professional masters. Uh, so this is a picture of these sessions. Uh, I'll show you a quick video. For those who are in Porto Alegre, you have to see it again. <laughs> but it has been some time, so I don't think you might see it. Give me a second. So this is what the video that was produced about the teaching training session.
published by monthly. We also have a radio talk show. It weekly has one hour duration. Uh, we did it during the International Year of Astronomy, and it's on. It will be our second anniversary. Uh, we had a lot of small sections during the show. Uh, one is the weekly sky that I say what will be visible in the sky during the week. Uh, others, one song, one theme, you know, we take music that say something about the sky, and then you interview uh, an astronomer about what the song is, is telling you, have news, interviews, and one curious thing is the soap opera. Uh, we had this idea to make a soap opera in the radio uh, about, based on the Galileo's dialogues. You know, you have three characters, one is Salviati, with the man who believes in, believes in science. The other is Simplicio, which is the man who defends the church dogmas. And then you have the other one, Salvador, the first one, I always forget his name, the one who is the middle one. So we did a super opera based on that. And we liked so much the experience that we did another proposal for a foundation, a radio foundation in Brazil, about uh, a new radio soap opera uh, about science. And we won the prize, and we gathered some money to, to record it so we could hire you no know, professional experts. And it's called Eventive Cruise. All this is available on the web. I uh, don't have too much time to talk about it, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, all this goal also is broadcasted on our university's radio station. Uh, to some pictures of outreach, me talking to kids. Uh, yeah, and let me see if I have another picture here. What is this one? Yeah, so I, I talked to you about the weekly sky. So it began in the radio show, and by then we had an idea. Why don't you make we make a video cast? So because we have the video, no expertise. So this is a, this is a project that is going on for a year or so, uh, and now is in Brazilian public TV. So I'm going to show you an episode. Is one which has English subtitles. It's from two months ago. But um, beginning next month, in August, we have all the episodes with English subtitles. And it would be nice to have also Spanish subtitles because we have so many countries around us which speak Spanish. I have already talked with Martin. Maybe she should find help for us. Because uh, it's funny, I can find students in Brazil who can translate to English, but you find one that translates to Spanish is harder. Because, but we have several, several countries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to translate to Chinese or other things. So we have people in, in, in several countries. Yeah. So let's watch this because my time is already running out. Olá, eu sou Gustavo Rojas e esse é o Sal da Semana de 31 de Maio a 6 de Julho. manifestação fantástica da força da natureza. Suas erupções são frequentemente associadas à destruição, mas sem elas a vida na Terra não existiria. Os gases que compõem a nossa atmosfera foram emanados pelos vulcões no início da história do nosso planeta. Mas a Terra não é o único local do sistema solar com vulcões. Outros planetas e luas também apresentam esse tipo de formação geológica que em alguns casos ainda está ativa. Acompanhe-me num passeio pelos mais fantásticos vulcões extraterrestres. Nossa primeira parada é no planeta Vênus. A densa atmosfera que nos impede de observar sua superfície é também um indicativo de que no passado haviam muitos vulcões ativos. Observações de radar revelam uma superfície coberta por basalto e poucas crateras mais evidências de que há atividade vulcânica recente. 
de fato, Vênus é o planeta do Sistema Solar com o maior número de vulcões conhecidos, 1.600, embora nenhum deles esteja em atividade atualmente. O maior deles é o Monte Maat, que segue a mais de 8 km em relação ao seu redor. Se você achou o Monte Maat imponente, espere até conhecer o maior vulcão do Sistema Solar. Ele fica em Marte e chama-se Monte Olimpo, uma homenagem à morada dos deuses gregos. O Monte Olimpo tem 25 km de altura e é quase três vezes mais alto que o Monte Everest. Somente sua base possui 600 km de diâmetro e se ficasse no Brasil, ocuparia uma área semelhante à do estado do Rio Grande do Sul. O Monte Olimpo fica localizado numa região marciana rica em vulcões a província de Terra. Nela encontramos outros três imensos vulcões, os montes Ascreus, Pavones e Arsa. Todos têm mais de 14 km de altura. Apesar do tamanho impressionante, os vulcões marcianos estão extintos há pelo menos 500 milhões de anos. Na próxima semana, continuaremos nosso tour pelos vulcões do Sistema Solar. Até lá! Vamos ver agora quais os planetas visíveis nesta semana. O mês de junho começa com um evento especial, o eclipse parcial do Sol no dia 1 Infelizmente, serão poucas as testemunhas desse fenômeno, pois o evento só será visível do Ártico. Durante a semana, a Lua Crescente estará próxima a duas constelações zodiacais. Nos dias 3, 4 e 5, ela estará em Gêmeos e próxima às suas estrelas Castor e Pólux. Já nos dias 6 e 7, estará ao lado de Regulus, a Alfa de Leão. Saturno está visível a Nordeste no início da noite, na constelação de Virgem. Durante o mês de junho, estará muito próximo à estrela dupla Gama Virgínia, também conhecida como Porrima. Atinge sua altura máxima às 20 horas e 30 minutos e se põe às 2 horas. De madrugada, o planeta Júpiter é o primeiro a aparecer a leste, a partir das 4 horas, na constelação de Peixes. Antes do amanhecer surgem enfileirados Marte, Vênus e Mercúrio. Marte nasce às 5 horas, Vênus às 5h20 e, e Mercúrio às 5h40. Durante a semana, Mercúrio e Vênus vão se distanciando de Marte e na semana que vem já não será mais possível observar esse que é o planeta mais próximo do Sol. Esse foi o Sol dessa semana, eu vejo vocês na semana que vem. Até lá e seus limpos a todos. So this is it. Uh, we have 62 episodes already. Uh, all they are available at our YouTube channel. And it is now, as I said, being wrapped in a Brazilian public TV station. It's an educative station. It has changed a little bit in format. We have a female presenter now also, which is better looking than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I come in there to give a you know absolute But this project is all been has been done by students at the university also. Because we have you know a cinema uh, course there. So so we had students. So I think that the quality of it being done by by you know young people is very very good. Uh, well I already need I just want to mention, to, to finish it, uh, our work on Isaac. Uh, this is, Patrick has helped me a lot. We were the first Brazilian school to, university in the case, to, to join Isaac. And these are my students. They are almost all physics students. Uh, back there is our future observatorio, observatory. And they have discovered a few asteroids already, and we were invited uh, to join the Pone Stars campaign, which we did, and we are very happy to, to, to join Patrick. I'd like to thank him for giving us this opportunity, and they are very excited. They can, when a campaign ends, they keep pressing me to say, hey, when's the next one? We want to find more asteroids. We want to find more asteroids than Bulgaria, which they <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so, so uh, if I have any questions, you know, I can offer my expertise in, in videos and 
So you can share all the things here we do, uh, the talks and everything. I think uh, video has uh, even uh, more, yeah, a, a good reach, and I think it's important. So it's a media that we don't explore very much in, in our work here at Global Hands On University. So that's it. I'm already late. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand by.